Good morning. I am Christina Felchland, Director of Technology Consulting with Ledgeview Partners. I would like to welcome you to today's Dynamics 365 User Group webinar. Our spotlight training topic is what's new in October 2018 release. For our current customers, welcome back. It's always great to spend our time with you. For those new to Ledgeview Partners, welcome. Ledgeview Partners is a business and technology consulting company who partners with organizations to transform sales, marketing, customer service operations and processes that are supported by core technologies, including customer relationship management and marketing automation. We provide strategic business advice, process definition, and technology solutions to advance your business. Today, we are going to focus on the next Dynamics 365 releases. I'm gonna give you a quick reminder about version nine, the new release model, and on the Dynamics 365 online features being released, today we'll share the few new features, highlights for the sales categories, unified service interface, marketing, and field service. We will then close out the webinar with CRM resources and the next Dynamics 365 user group webinar topics. Be sure to stay tuned for separate content for the annual on-premise release for version 9, planned for the release in October. So before we get into what's new in the next release, we want to remind everyone that the upgrade to move to V9 is approaching quickly. All online orgs on Dynamics 365 8.2 must be updated to the new version 9.0 by January 31st, 2019. We put together, put together a landing page for you to look at the information, benefits of upgrading, top considerations, and important deadlines. It seems crazy to think that we are still talking about version 9 upgrades when Microsoft has already released the notes for the next release. Earlier in the summer, Microsoft announced that they would be sticking to two major releases per year, April and October. In today's webinar, we are focusing on the October 2018 release features planned to be released in, in the user community in April 2019. Before I turn it over to Michael, I wanted to let you know about the Microsoft's continuous delivery method I'm sorry, model that begins with this next release in April 2019. Moving to Dynamics 365 version 9.0 is going to be foundational in allowing Microsoft to move forward with their continuous delivery method, making everyone be on the same one version for all future online upgrades and updates. What does this mean to you? Upgrading everyone within the same data center at the same time and allowing each individual org to turn on the new features they want to utilize. How does this impact our customers? There will be no more customer-driven updates, meaning after January 31st, 2019, there will be no more choosing when you wanna upgrade your org. As your CRM partner, Ledgeville will keep you up to date with every future releases release notes. These will explain the new features and areas that could break after the upgrade occurs. North America will be the last data center upgraded when the upgrade occurs. Smaller data, smaller data centers will be upgraded first, and then within a few weeks, the larger ones will be upgraded, meaning there may be a little buffer if a release causes major issues before it is applied to most of our customers. There will be no way to upgrade a sandbox first and then production. They will all get upgraded at the same time. You will be able to turn on the new features within the new sandbox first to test before implementing them in production. Microsoft will be able to use data and statistics to determine how their releases will impact data centers since everyone will be on the same version. This is something new that Microsoft can utilize and hopefully will effectively communicate when making changes and deprecating features that could impact current configurations and customizations. So with the April 2019 release, we will be all in it together. So don't worry, Ledgeville will be here to support you along the way. However, we cannot stress enough how important it is to get all of your deprecated code updated before this release in April 2019. Now, to get to today's feature topic, I will turn it over to Michael Dodds, Application Consultant with Ledgeview Partners, as he shares his highlights for the October 2018 release. Thank you very much for that introduction, Christina. Hello, and uh, thank you so much for attending today's webinar. I hope everybody is doing, uh, doing very well today and uh, enjoying fall. Obviously, it's been a little bit time since we talked, and uh, I missed everyone. So, um, you know, last time we talked, it was it was a little bit of summer, but now it's fall. We're getting into Halloween, so don't worry. We got treats this time and not tricks. So let's get into the nice topics that we're going to get into about October 2018. Some really cool stuff coming coming out from Microsoft. So let's jump on in. 
first we're gonna focus on sales, okay? So we're gonna go up, jump into the sales application here, okay? Playbooks. This is some really neat features. What we're gonna talk about first, okay? Very important to pay attention to what's on top here. General availability, that means this is available to everyone right off the bat, okay? That means it's available, not a preview feature. It's gonna come out, these are gonna be available to you, okay? After we get through a couple of these, we're gonna flip to ones that are gonna be preview features, okay? So playbooks are available for general availability. Playbooks are predictive and event-driven guidance systems. Okay, and they're gonna suggest the next best action items that are associated with sales activities so you can successfully respond to the, to the external event. So in other words, Microsoft is getting into the predictive game, okay? That's really a big part of this release. They're really looking to help you predict and get ahead of the next step and be prepared for the next step. So that's what this playbook is looking to do. They're configurable, okay? You can determine the set of tasks and activities that are gonna be automated once the playbook is triggered, okay? So you can configure configure what those tasks and activities are gonna be, are going to be when the playbook is gonna be triggered for you, okay? You can search for and launch those playbooks for specific scenario. So you have power over these. You can track the status of your playbook progress against their outcome and whether it's successful or not. So you're not just looking at a playbook, setting it up. It's not just predictive and event driven. You could also look at the status. How did my playbook do against its outcome? Was it, was it successful? Was it not successful? So it's not just looking and giving you the next step. It's also giving you the analytics going, okay, how did it do? Was it successful? Was it not? Was this the right play? Okay, so it truly is a playbook. LinkedIn Insights. This is also available for general availability. Any business process can be created or enhanced to include LinkedIn Insights about people and companies. Okay, so what this does is it allows users to complete stages more accurately and quickly, okay? And thus it drives the sales through to completion, okay? The LinkedIn Insights, it's gonna include the size, industry, and location data about those companies, okay? Because it's integrated with LinkedIn, with the LinkedIn Insights, it's gonna give you this information, okay? the company, position, and years of experience for those people. Icebreakers and conversation starters. That's gonna give you a warm engagement to start a conversation with your customers. That's one of the hardest things to do is to get an icebreaker as a conversation starter. You're gonna get those. That way you are going in comfortable to those conversations, okay? First, second, and team link connections provide a path to warm introductions. Okay, because it looks at the entire organization and the aggregate networks. Okay, so it's looking through. Okay, LinkedIn Insights is also providing recommendations for people similar to a target lead or a person that plays a key role in the organization. Okay, so it's, it's looking at that person and it's going, okay, we, we recommend these people as well. Okay, or this person plays a key role in the organization. So it's again, giving that predictability or it's helping you go that next step. Okay, saying, hey, we also think that this person is going to be a key person for you to be in contact with. Okay, or this is somebody similar to a target lead. Okay, so LinkedIn Insights is, because it's working with LinkedIn, is giving you this key information for you. And this is, again, general availability. Okay, not a preview feature. Now we're jumping into some preview features. Okay, so um, as we've talked about before, preview features, these are items that are set up that you have to agree to terms and conditions and turn on. 
These are ones that may or may not be available going forward into general availability, okay? Microsoft Teams integration. So Microsoft Teams um, is something that's out there within Office 365. So it's now an integration with Dynamics 365. And it's some of the key features are that it utilizes persistent chat sessions across Microsoft Teams and Dynamics 365 records. And what I mean when I say persistent chat sessions is that it's not closing, okay? So it's always open, okay? You can share and co-author sales collateral with your team. And then files are stored in one central location, making it easier for you and your team members to get to those files. And then the who knows whom, this is a really great feature. User, users can use this tool to identify other users in your organization that can help you introduce them to other leads and contacts, okay? So this is a quick quick way to say, oh, Christina Christina knows a contact um, in, in this organization, so if you're working within an organization and you need to get your foot in the door with another person, I can go, oh, Christina, Christina's worked with this person before. I can leverage her relationship with this person to get my foot in the door with them, okay? So that's what that who knows whom tool is for, okay? Another preview feature, talking points. This allows users to look at their past communications with customers, and it looks to pull out specific talking points, you know, different sports interests, family, health, different items like that. So it's going back and going, okay, what different things have we talked about in the past that are good talking points to talk with this customer about, okay? And it's pulling that information that says, hey, you should, this, these are good things to bring up in conversation, okay? So again, aiding you as a salesperson, as a sales user in your everyday, okay? Quick actions. You'll want to set up intelligence insights uh, within your app while you're taking notes for your customer. When you've done this, quick actions then analyzes this and suggests different actions to take, okay? These can be task creation appointment creation okay so different quick actions that it'll want you to take based on the notes that you're taking some more preview features again we're still we're kind of seeing some commonalities here analytics predictive items here so you're kind of seeing the road that microsoft's taking with this release okay predictive lead scoring it's scoring a lead from one to 100 on how likely it is to become an opportunity, okay? Now, out of the box, it's considering attributes from other entities, okay? So it's not just looking at the lead alone. It's looking at accounts and contacts as well, looking at attributes from them, and even custom entities as well. And it's taking all these and considering, okay, how likely is this lead to become an opportunity? And then scoring that. And then users can select and deselect um, for the model enabling, model customization and tuning. So it can select and deselect, okay? And then the lead score, the score trend, and top reasons are all available on out-of-the-box forms and views, okay? And then relationship analytics with LinkedIn in mail, okay? So we're also seeing a commonality where we're seeing LinkedIn playing more of an, <clears throat> excuse me, more of an integrated role as well. When you combine the data of Dynamics 365, Exchange Online, and LinkedIn in-mail relationship analytics, they can provide a more health, a more healthy analysis of deals as it has more data to analyze. Because relationship analytics is already a piece with it, it's already an item that you can do with relationship analytics. But now you're adding an additional piece with LinkedIn in mail, okay? 
So now you have another layer, okay? And that just gives, because you have more data, it's gonna allow it to have the analysis be even more complete, okay? Dynamics 365 AI for the sales app. This is a big item for sales leaders. Sales leaders are no longer need to dive through reports and analysis um, because the AI is gonna proactively look through this and provide insights from the sales data, okay? They're gonna provide you with a home page that provides answers to common questions regarding performance. And then focus and to help you focus on the right deals. Okay? So instead of needing to do that work yourself and go through all that data, mine through all that information to come up with this, AI is going to do this for you. Okay? It's going to use question and answer based processing. And it's going to use conversational methodology to help ask questions and get reports from sales data. Lead prioritization using predictive lead scoring, which we talked about previously. Okay. Opportunity pipeline analysis using relationship analytics powered by exchange data. Okay. Sales team performance analysis and individual scorecards will also be handled through the AI for sales for the sales app. Okay. Sales activity reports using relationship analytics that brings data from Exchange and Dynamics 365 graphs. So these are some really, really nice items that Microsoft is bringing forward here from an automation standpoint and also from an analytics standpoint, okay? Microsoft Call Intelligence, uh, this aids in coaching by connecting uh, telephony call centers. Um, recording with the app and the manager this way the managers can generate conversation insights so this is really meant more for a call center but what it's doing is it's helping you look at the call center recording with the app that way the managers can generate conversation insights off of this recording And that's all for the sales side. Next, we're gonna jump into the unified user interface. The new piece here, I'm actually gonna jump in and show you quickly, but this is enabling the embedded legacy dialogues. And this basically allows you to bring over buttons from your website to the unified user interface, okay? And simply what this is, and like advanced find, merge, assign, Simply where this is, is it's the settings, administration, system settings. So all the way down here at the bottom, enable embedding of certain legacy dialogues and unified interface browser clients. So it's yes, click okay. That's all you'll need to do. Okay, so you'll then have advanced find, merge, assign. So those are different buttons that you'll see. And next we're gonna go into marketing. Some new things that you'll see, intelligence is now integrated into the marketing app. This means that marketing marketers can build custom dashboards using Power BI to leverage data from various apps, marketing interactions, and other data sources. You can combine these analytics with social listening, which monitors your brand awareness, sentiment on social networks, and get the full picture and evaluate the success of your campaigns. All right on the visual customer journey canvas. Okay. Personalized marketing experiences. These are fine tuned for both the users and the prospects. Account based marketing is going to help close more deals by targeting specific accounts that are most likely to generate revenue. Okay. Account Content management is supported at the block level with role-based editing privileges. The new marketing calendar is gonna provide a quick overview of all scheduled journeys and events to help marketers plan better. 
You're going to have more integrations with Microsoft offerings, including deeper LinkedIn integrations that's going to extend into marketing automation. And then fundamental improvements. It's going to provide improved performance, greater scalability, and throughput of email marketing services. The segmentation user interface has been enhanced to improve usability and performance for the most common scenarios. So this is what you're going to be getting, and this is coming uh, general availability in November. With all this being said, however, we they've made a recent change with the licensing structure. Um, that is an improvement. However, we're still not confident in the product usage yet. We've been trying to get an initial installation for a client done for for about a month. Um, we right now we currently have are seeing some improvements in this area. However, we do still have a recommendation of discussing options with Ledview at this point regarding the marketing um, directions of going with a marketing tool. So I wanted to bring forth the information in terms of what marketing is going with, but also our recommendations in terms of what we have seen from the marketing app at this point. And also in terms of their changes to their like licensing structure, we have seen improvements, but also things that we have seen in terms of um, product usage. So we want to bring that forth. We also recommend having a discussion with us here at Ledgeview um, with our marketing specialist. Um, and that way we can help direct you to the best product that will be used for your needs. Next, I want to touch in the field service. By the way, I have to call out our, our marketing team. They put in an excellent picture here of literally a service tech in a field. So they, they have a great sense of humor. Um, for our field service, these are going to be general availability in November for all of these. So not quite yet, but coming out soon. Um, there's going to be integration with finance and operations. This will allow for account and product and price list data and work order data to be moved into sales orders when work orders are marked as closed. This is a pretty this is a pretty cool feature that's all going to be integrated. Um, warehouse, PO, and invoice integration capabilities are also going to be available. Entitlement man, uh, management. Basically, what this is saying is that you're now saying the entitlement functionality is extended with field service. So now a customer is going, you can specify what levels of support a customer is entitled to within field service, okay? Entitlements include counts, contacts, products, work orders, and work order performance metrics. Multi-resource scheduling, you're gonna see a lot of scheduling items within field, um, within field service. So that's one thing I want to point out. Uh, for multi-resource scheduling for work orders, uh, multiple resources can be scheduled against a single work order. Okay, So that means incident types can now be related to a requirement group template. When you create a work order, select an incident type, and then a group of requirements can be added to that work order. SLA management, that's service level agreement management. Those service level agreement details will populate onto the work orders. And that means that the scheduling process will take into account, will take into the account commitments based on the SLAs, okay? So basically it's looking at the SLAs when you're scheduling, okay? Uh, integration with Microsoft Bot Frameworks. This is a really cool feature for mobile. So when your field service reps are out in the field, um, and a lot of jobs can be very much the same, you can actually set up Microsoft bots based on the Microsoft, you can set up bots based on the Microsoft framework, or even have ones that are your own bots based on template, coded based off of a template, um, that will basically complete tasks through conversational or hands-free actions through the mobile devices. It's a pretty cool feature. 
You can define groups of requirements with conditional logic. Logic, excuse me. This is for universal resource scheduling. When you see URS next to it, that's what that means. Um, these groups consist of multiple requirements and scheduled teams of resources. Okay. So basically, for one of those requirement groups, the resource requirements can be defined into a grid-based control. And this allows you the requirements to be organized into a hierarchical manner. Okay, so it allows you to control it, control them, and then put it into a hierarchical organization. Multi-resource scheduling for universal resource scheduling allows you to dynamically set resources at the same location or to meet remotely, and then various other items as well. When you're setting up the multi-resource scheduling, you can search across the various ways the teams can be assembled. Then you can mix and match your team. You can set crews with individuals, set people, equipment, and facilities, or you can do individual and crews together. And then you can schedule predefined resource crews. So basically, if you think about it, um, going back to my old days when I was in college, I worked on a crew for landscaping. I work with the same crew every single day. That's a crew. You're scheduling that predefined crew. You're putting them together, and then you can schedule that predefined crew. Those crews are together. That's a crew. Then you can schedule that crew for work. Resource pools. Basically, what this means is if you want to assign, you can assign a resource to a pool. And that means that the scheduler is then booking a requirement against the pool of resources instead of defining an individual to perform the work. Facility scheduling, this is simply you're scheduling the work to be done at a service provider's location instead of a customer's. And then fulfillment preferences, this is intended to really simplify the experience for the scheduler and the customer and decrease the amount of time it takes to book an appointment because you're setting preset intervals, basically 15 minutes for an appointment on the half hour. So at 1.30, 15 minute appointment, two o'clock, 15 minute appointment. Time groups, okay, preset windows, two to five, that's a preset window. Hide specific times. If there's certain times that you don't want something to be scheduled, you're hiding those times. Display only the top results to your scheduler. Make it efficient for them. Capacity scheduling. Okay, you can specify how much effort is needed from a resource. Okay, and the schedule scheduling assistant will look at the resource's capacity to see if the necessary effort is available. Okay, very useful for a facility. So if there's so many spaces available um, at a facility and you have a van which takes up two spaces, or a car only takes up one you know the capacity is then affected. It's two cars worth. A van takes up two cars worth of capacity. Scheduled board split view, this one's really interesting. So if you wanna dive into a scheduled, scheduled board view, uh, if you wanna dive deeper into that, but you still wanna see the original schedule board, it'll actually split itself off so you can dive deeper into that in certain situations. Enhanced Internet of Things Central Integration. This will allow you to, if you have um, an Internet of Things mobile device, uh, allow you to embed Internet of Things Central Device State and Measurement Visuals directly within the field service mobile application. This is really for being out in the field. Um, store telemetry data from Internet of Things Central in an Azure blob and enable an embedded Power BI visualizing data and allow technicians to send commands from the field service mobile application back to Internet of Things Central. You can enable more objectives. This is, we're getting into resource scheduling optimization. Uh, support preferred resources as an objective. So if you have a preferred resource for certain requirements, the optimizer is going to look work to assign those bookings. So, I mean, it's still going to have to take into consideration, you know, um, other constraints as well, but it's going to work to schedule that preferred resource first. 
and then support best and least matching skills as an objective. You know, better meet SLA and customer satisfaction. It's going to use best matching skills for that, while balancing uh, cost efficiency with while using the lower matching skills. Single resource optimization. This is really great if you had to, you know, assign an emergency situation to a single resource. You can re-optimize a single selected resource after they've been assigned that. So it'll re-optimize it for you. And then the what-if analysis statistic. This one, I'm a huge fan of. I thought this was really neat. Um, so a resource scheduling opti optimization administrator can now use simulations to run, runs to adjust. So optimization scope, objectives, and other parameters to help them in understanding what optimizations results will look, what they'll look like prior to setting them for the recurring schedule. Basically run, use different runs to understand, hey, what's gonna work best for them? What's it gonna look like, okay? And then they can evaluate it even better by comparing those simulation run against existing bookings. So it's, a it's a really cool tool. Really big fan of that one. All right. Thank you, Michael, for the great content. We hope you are all excited for these new features, just like we are here at LegeView. So we're excited to bring you our best practices for beginner admin in November and our advanced admin in December. If you know of anyone who you would like in your organization to join us on these webinars, please remind them they can register for these webinars by visiting our webpage at LegeViewPartners.com. Click on the news and events. Uh, button and on the right hand side you will see these webinar registration links along with all other webinars about business consulting and marketing automation and strategy. On behalf of myself, Michael, and all of us at LegeView, we thank you for taking the time to attend our user group webinar today. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have a great day.